How is the album sales? For both, both albums are still selling well. Rise of the Mutants is still selling well. So, uh, you know, did you ever see that movie Trick or Treat? Uh, Rise of the Mutants was in there. Oh, I know, oh, yeah. Yeah, they used it in the movie, so that's still selling well. And then Brains, uh, got, I don't know, I suppose we'll be pushing on like 20,000, 30,000, oh, something like that. Yeah. But we're no longer on combat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good question, huh? See, I'm jumping ahead of you. What uh, labels are... Yeah, SST and no. Shattered are both okay. interested in signing us right now. So, one of those two. We'll have to sit down and talk it out, you know. How was your tour? It was really successful. It was, went really well. We played uh, all the way out east, and then we went down south and through the southern states, and then came back up home. How long was that? was that? About six weeks we were gone. And uh, we played about uh, 18 dates. A couple of them were kind of fucked because the promoters were assholes. They didn't put out... They, they, no promotion? Yeah, no promotion. But uh, the overall, the majority of them were highly successful. Because a lot of other towns have uh, metal radio and stuff like that. So they re they pack in at the shows, you know. How was the New York gig? That was hot. It was in a place called the Cat Club. It was uh, uh, built from the Beastie Boys and uh, Glenn Danzig came down to the show. That was hot. It was a good time. The promoter got fired after the show, though, because it was us. And then before us, there was this performing artist that like uh, lit a baby doll on fire or something, and started the stage and himself on fire a little bit and stuff. So <laughs> between us and him, the guy got fired after the show. Hey, what is your situation with combat? It's disintegrated. We don't have any have ties a, with them at all. Just a two, uh, two vinyl contract. Uh, yeah. No. Uh. Uh. We had we could have done four more with them, but we told them we weren't interested in working with them because they weren't promoting yeah. the band properly. And we did tell them that we didn't. They didn't tell us that they didn't want us anymore. We told them we didn't want to work with them anymore. It was you know. Did they die? Combat? Yeah. No. That's what I heard. That, that's Angel. from that Dark Angel thing. That's just hype, though. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah they're just hyping up the album. Okay. Um, what were you doing on a show with the Peter Smokers? Debating the evils of rock and roll music. They claim that it's evil, and you know, we know that it's not. So I went on the Twin Cities Live and showed them what fools they were. Weren't you? Uh, weren't your album that uh, on like a couple nationwide TV shows? Like oh yeah, during the PMRC. Yeah. Oh, it was on Donahue. It was on Entertainment Tonight. It was on the Today Show. It was on Good Morning America. It was on a bunch of cable shows. And then uh, the Peter Peters Brothers, they use Rise of the Mutants in their, uh, in their uh, slide presentation of evil rock bands, so that's hot. <laughs> what is the new album going to be called and what songs are going to be called? The new album is going to be called America's Dead. We were originally going to call it Monkey See, Monkey Do, but now we decided to change it. We've got a cool cover lined up for it, keep it in tradition. And uh, I could probably tell you what it is. Comic book like? Oh yeah, I'm gonna be uh, depicted with a bloody chainsaw, uh, cutting Uncle Sam to pieces. <laughs> it's called America's Dad. It's like Iron Maiden so, in uh, Thatcher. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Only we're gonna really cut them up, little bits. <laughs> and uh, so, what songs are gonna be on it? A uh, bunch of new ones: Monkey See, Monkey Do, Dark Side, uh, Bloodthirsty, uh, Satan's Death. Uh, breathing Down Your Back, Island of the Damned, Vicious Dreams, um, America's Dad, the title track. Um, it's going to be 10 tunes all together, so I don't know how many that is. Okay, how does uh, Minneapolis compare with the rest of the nation for scene like For scene, it's picking up. The thing that we didn't have before was heavy metal radio, and now KJO 104 has started to push heavy metal. Yeah. And so... Hopefully it's really going to help, you know, balloon the metal movement here. Yeah, you're, you're going to be on next week. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be on there next Friday night. It's, uh, the guy J.J. Jeffries is into metal, you know, so he knows his stuff. He plays old Anthrax and old Exciter, things like that, you know. And, uh, so I think he's going to do it, yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to do a good job helping out the metal market, you know. How was it feeling to see Nationwide on the tour? real successfully like I said before the one the town a lot of towns have radio 
I think that's the key, you know, some kind of underground radio or something, you know. And what is Coleridge's influences? Alice Cooper, Kiss, uh, Aerosmith, Plasmatics, Motorhead. Those are my favorites. Who do you listen to now? I listen to, uh, I still listen to old Iggy too. Of course, we can't forget the mighty Ig. Uh, I listen to all that stuff. That's what I listen to. I listen to most of my old stuff, and then I like I listen to S.O.D., Metallica, Chromags, stuff like that. Uh, Frank. Those are the newer bands that I've been listening to. How did you go about uh, asking you and Bob to do this cover? Well, all you have to do is call. Uh, you don't have to uh, get the artist permission. You have to get uh, ASCAP's permission. You see if inside albums it says ASCAP. Yeah. You just gotta call them and tell them your intent. Send them a letter of intent. That's all that's involved with it. And do they have? Do they want to hear it before you do it? Uh huh. No. Do you like this black death metal thing that's going on? Not particularly. Our lyrics have always dealt with uh, the opposite, you know. Because I think, it, uh, you know, I I have Christian upbringing and Christian values, you know. So I would never sing about anything like that. And I think it's kind of becoming ludicrous, you know. It's like all these bands were jumping on the band, but with a death metal band, right? Yeah. Which is, with, I bored me right away. You know, Venom did it first. That was cool, you know. Slayer. All of a sudden, cool. Slayer came along, yeah. And now everybody after that. Hey, uh, Ronnie asked me to borrow some blood. I uh, know, because we only got enough for the show. Uh, Tom Sire, yeah. And, uh, so what else? Um, but did you hear the Omeg song? The Delania? No. It's about uh, how bad death metal lyrics are. Oh, yeah. Because when they play with Venom, they thought that that's really stupid how they corrupt kids' minds. Yeah. To do that, so. They're into that Hare Krishna, the mind corruption kind of thing. Uh-huh. Oh, I should talk. They're really into Hare Krishna and that mind corruption kind of thing. So, you know. Was a peeler trying to have a mystique about them? Well, as much as a comic book or a horror movie, you know, that's all we are, you know, set to. Uh, I guess there's a mystique within the, you know, the way we present ourselves, the way we come across, and the way. I guess the mystique really stems from uh, the publicity we've gotten off of it, you know what I mean? Everybody wants to see what it's all about, and, uh, you know, we're pretty open, you know. Uh, well-rounded guys, so I mean, I guess, you know, that's a mistake. Who writes the lyrics and how do they think about them? What do they think about them? If they so, come I do lyrics? all the lyrics. I've Where do you get your ideas? From horror movies and comic books. <laughs> and, you know, it's like I always have, I constantly have little mini movies going on in my head, you know, and I write them down and I write them in the songs. Pretty soon. It's like, uh, uh, you know, a lot of it stems from the horror and the comic book because that's really what I'm into, wrestling too. That's a definite influence, you know. Maybe more uh, in uh, the way I act than my lyrics though, wrestling is involved. But uh, it's like, I sit down and I write down these movies that are going on in my head, you know. Most all of our songs have some kind of a storyline to them or something, you know. Unless it's, or also I'm influenced by, you know, our audience and the response we get from them. That's where songs like Shock Rock and, uh, and uh, Speed Thrills and things like that have come from. Okay, what's your situation about your drummer? It's actually, it's kind of helped us in a way because media was really getting to be a negative influence. He was really getting to be down on it, you know, kind of paler and everything, so. You know, it's fine that he went his own way. It's better for us because it's kind of broken that chain that we had. You know, because it brings if you're not all four pushing for the same thing, it's it's a, like a weight on your on your leg. And so we cut this weight off. You know, Terry's gonna work with us until we find somebody competent enough. So have we you have it covered. Have you uh, got any people that you're uh, satisfied with that you want to be in the band? Um, we haven't really tried anybody out because our basic concern right away was to do these shows because we didn't want to cancel these shows, so we talked to Terry and worked that out, you know. I, we haven't really tried it. Got a tape from a couple tapes and stuff that we've listened to that sounds good, but we're not going to worry about uh, getting somebody right like that. We've got to find somebody that sees everything the way we do, you know. So that's more important to us. Any closing comments? 
No, just, mm -hmm. you know, have a good time when you come to see Impaler. Always have a good time. Don't let people tell you what to do. Don't let people make it conform to their ideas, you know. Just keep your mind open and like whatever you want to like, you know. That's, that's the most important thing you can say to anybody. Okay. All right, quick.